This snippet is Understanding Layout Containers. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training from Microsoft. In this snippet, you'll learn a little bit about the difference between the layout containers Grid and Canvas. Additionally, you'll learn how to select, lock, and hide objects, as well as reorder them in Expression Blend 3. So let's get started here with the Beehive project associated with this snippet. The first thing we want to look at when we talk about layout containers is the Objects and Timeline panel. Now, the Objects and Timeline panel works within the nested tree structure. So here I have the layout root object. If I click on that, we can see it's nested within the user control. However, we can think of the layout root as the parent element of all the other objects within our artboard. If we look in the Properties panel, we can see that layout root is actually a grid. If we click on the arrow to the left of the layout root, we can see that we have other elements nested within. So the layout root is the parent, and these other elements, such as hive, background, honeycomb, ball, and paddle, are all the children. Now in this case, the hive background, if we click on that and look within the properties panel, we can actually see that this is a canvas. So here we have a canvas nested within a grid. If we go ahead and expand the honeycomb canvas, we can see that there's another canvas nested within that called hex shape. Selecting on any of these elements also selects them within the artboard. Let's go ahead and click back on honeycomb for a moment. I'll also collapse it just to make it a little easier to explain. Now with the canvas honeycomb selected, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Even though within the layout section located under the properties panel, we can see some of these values, it can get a little overwhelming or confusing. So what I'll do is I'll click within the search field here, and I'm going to type margin. And what this does is show me just the margin properties for this element. So this honeycomb canvas, which is a child of the layout root grid, can be controlled by margins. Currently, we have left right, bottom, and top margins of zero. What I'm going to do here is place my cursor within the first field, and I'll type 100, and then press return. We can now see that there's 100 display units of space between that honeycomb and the left-hand side of the grid. If I go ahead and place a value of 200 for the top margin, it gets pushed down. So we can see there's now 200 display units of space between that canvas and the top of the grid. I'm going to go ahead and put this back to zero by typing zero in both. Now I'll go ahead and expand that honeycomb canvas because we have a nested canvas within, labeled hex shape. By the way, if I expand that hex shape, you can see there's a number of paths which make up that hex shape. However, I'm going to go ahead and collapse that again. Now, because this canvas is nested within a canvas, we have a totally different behavior. If I attempt to change the margins, let's say I change a left margin to 100, we can see that the contents of that do not change. I'm going to control Z. Again, I'm going to use this little trick of typing canvas. And all I'm going to see here are the canvas properties. When we want to move that object, we use the left and top values, because canvases look at the parent element, and they move according to that one. Now within the layout section, we have left and top values. So instead of using margins, we can use these left and top values because that's how a canvas is positioned according to the parent element. So within left, I'll go ahead and type 200. I'll press tab. And then I'll change the top value to 100. Now again, we can see the initial container labeled honeycomb is still here. So what we're able to do is reposition the hex shape canvas because it's nested within the honeycomb. I'll go ahead and control Z to undo that. So a few other things that we'll look at here, I'm going to collapse that honeycomb canvas just to make it look a little more tidy on screen. We can also hide objects by clicking on the eyeball located here. When I hide the honeycomb object, it disappears from the design view. It's important to point out that this is just hidden within this design view. If I choose Project, Run Project, we can see that that honeycomb is still visible. That's because it's only hidden within the authoring or design view. I'll go back to Expression Blend and click that eyeball once again to show the object. Now we also have the ability to lock elements. So something that we do quite often is to lock background elements so that you cannot accidentally drag them. I'll click on the padlock here for Hive Background. Notice that I can no longer click and drag that hive background. However, if it's unlocked, 
I can click and drag it accidentally. I'll control Z to put that back. Now at any given point, you can always place an object within a canvas. So I'm going to click on the paddle element, which in this case is just an image. I'll right click and choose group into canvas. Although notice that I also have the option to group into a grid. However, I'm going to choose canvas for now. And then in order to rename that canvas, I'll go ahead and click on the name and call it paddle. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to group objects within canvases or other containers if you want to add additional items. So for example, maybe we would want to add an effect or some sort of highlight to this paddle. For now, however, we'll leave it as is. The last thing we want to talk about is stacking order. I'll go ahead and click on the ball object here. Now visually speaking, this ball is closer to the viewer. We refer to this as the stacking or Z order. If I want to reposition this ball, I'm going to move it up within the tree. I'm going to click on that ball and then drag it up until it reaches this section here, right above the hive background. When I release, the ball disappears. I'm going to click on the background so we can see it by itself. So the ball is now hidden behind the background because it's above it within the tree. Again, I'm going to go ahead and collapse that hive background just to make it a little bit more obvious. And if I want to bring that ball forward, but not as far forward as before, I can click on the ball, drag it down, and you can see there's a small blue arrow between the hive background canvas and the honeycomb. When I release, the ball is now visible again. Why? Because I've changed the stacking order, and it's now above the background, but technically below the honeycomb. We can also see that if we click and drag that honeycomb, and we place it over the ball. However, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So in this snippet, you've had a chance to learn about grids versus canvases, as well as how to select, lock, and hide objects. Thank you for now. This is Jeremy Osborne presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.